Hello everyone. Welcome to our recorded lecture on steady state error. Initially what is error? See let's look at this system. The input the system and the output. The error denoted by E of T is defined as the difference between the output and the input or sometimes called reference. The reference is what we, we expect from the system or the desired behavior of the system, the reference. But the output is the actual behavior of the system and these two are not necessarily the same. So for example, if uh, uh, we look at the temperature control of a room uh, as a system, uh, let's plot the output of the system. The input could be constant, for example, 70 degrees of Fahrenheit. How does the output behave? When we apply this desired RIF input, or, or, or this, uh, this desired behavior, or the input to the system, the output may change like this. As you see, we have a transient response in here. This area is the port which uh, was transient because after a while the output settled at a fixed and permanent, not necessarily fixed, but uh, settled down to a permanent behavior. That area would then be called a steady state behavior. So. A steady state part this one transient part the error will be at each moment will be the difference between where we want it to be and where we are right now so this area will be error at this time. For example, at this t, t0, error at t0 will be this. As you see in here, the error decreases to zero as t goes to infinity. So we call this a steady state error equal to zero for such a response. So. E at infinity a steady a state error but that was an example scenario something else can happen too for example we may settle down at this temperature I mean the root room temperature instead of raising to 70 degrees of Fahrenheit may settle down at for example 50 degrees. Then we say the steady state error is minus 20. 
so it's not zero so this state is not zero in this case but what are the inputs in here the input for both of these two outputs was the constant uh, command of 70 degrees uh, of Fahrenheit so the input was R of D was 70 times U of D unit step multiplied by 70 sometimes the input is not unit step the input could be much more complicated for example look at this T C of D the input could be a ramp T U of T so it changes it increases with time with time so for example we want the temperature to raise the desired temperature is increasing the temperature like one degrees one degree per minute okay so that's the desired temperature in such a case the output could have one of these three behaviors this is the desired case a steady state error is zero so the output converges to the desired temperature another case is a steady state error equals constant but not zero so you see we have at each instant we have this much error at each instant see we are here but we want it to be there the third scenario Is something like this the actual temperature is increasing but not with the desired rate so the difference the error is increasing so at this moment the error is this much but at this moment the error is this much so the error is increasing we say steady state error equals infinity because when t goes to infinity this difference converges to infinity so uh, in uh, this part of the course we are going to check whether this is the case oh, I'm sorry E infinity equals zero whether this is the case or this is the case or this one so we're going to look at different uh, systems with different inputs another scenario would be the input being parabola so r of t equals t square u of t what happens in this case do we track perfectly after the transient response is gone or we, we track something else with a permanent error or statistic error or we may track but with a fixed error 
different things can happen. What we do, we'll look at the unity feedback system We call this unity feedback because there's no transfer function in the feedback loop. So this will be the reference in Laplace domain. This will be the error and this will be the output. So the output feeding back to the system subtracted from the reference forms the error. This being the controller and this being the plant. We are interested in analyzing the behavior of this guy, the error as t goes to infinity. One way of doing that is by finding the perfect the relation for error versus time. If C of T is found, E of T can be calculated and once its limit as T goes to infinity is calculated we end up with a steady state error which is what we wanted for example example 1 A first order system for unit step input CFS equals one over S plus one multiplied by one over S. We know that by partial fraction expansion, we end up with, and then taking Laplace inverse, we end up with C of t equals 1 minus e to the power of minus t multiplied by u of t. Therefore, e of t equals C of t of mi minus r of t equals minus e to the power of minus t u of t now limit t goes to infinity of e of t equals zero so a steady state error is zero So we found the relation for C of T and once this was found E of T was calculated because R of T
was equal to u of t. Once error was found, we set t goes to infinity, and because of this exponential function, this exponent in here, this part goes to zero as t goes to infinity. So this tested error was zero. But what if we put this thing in a feedback loop? So, example two. R of S, the same first order system R of S, the input being unit a step. If you find the equivalent transfer function It's equal to the transfer function, the direct line between the input and the output. So 1 over s plus 1 divided by 1 plus the loop gain function. What is loop gain function? Screen, white screen. Loop gain function is the product of all of the transfer functions around the loop. It's typically denoted with LFS. So, one plus the, the transfer function between C so this is C of S over R of S equals the transfer functions, product of the transfer functions in the direct line between the input and the output, which is this guy, over 1 plus loop gain function. So equals, it's equal to 1 over S plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over S plus 1, because loop gain function is also 1 over s plus 1 because that is the only transfer function in the system. So this is equal to 1 over s plus 2. C of t given r of s equals 1 over s. C of s equals g eq multiplied by r of s and by partial fraction expansion and the Laplace inverse will end up with 0.5 minus 0.5 e to the power of minus 2t u of t so e of t equals c of t minus u of t will be equal to minus 0.5 minus 0.5 e to the power of minus 2t the whole thing multiplied by u of t so t goes to infinity equals minus 0.5 A steady state error is not zero, but it's constant, as you see in here. See, this was the first, the, the, the same first order stable system, which we used in the previous example, and we realized that the steady, steady state error is zero. But when we put that in a feedback loop, 
as in here, we realize that the steady state error will be non-zero. So the error in here will not go to zero, but it will be constant. will go to a constant value. So after these examples, let's uh, find a relation for the general case of having any plant in here, any controller in here, any one of those three different type of inputs, i.e. Uh, the unit step, ramp or parabola in here. For this general case, let's find the steady state error. What we do, instead of finding C versus time, I'm sorry, this should have been C of S because we're dealing with Laplace domain in here. So instead of finding C of S and then C of T in order to find E of T and letting calculating this limit, we use the so-called final value theorem which says that if the Laplace in the transform, the, this error in the Laplace space is available, we can directly calculate the steady state error. So, final value theorem. says that if Laplace inverse of A signal little e of t is given as e of s then Laplace of e at infinity equals the limit s going to zero s multiplied by e of s. This is a very nice theorem because it says that if you have e of s you multiply it by s and let s go to zero. Both s's, this the s in here and the s in here, all of s's. Then you end up with Laplace of e of t, I'm sorry, Laplace of state error. Calculating its Laplace inverse you have the desired steady state error. But for this purpose, we need to know E of S. E of S, however, can be calculated through this diagram. If we find the transfer function E of S over R of S, if we find this transfer function, then we easily multiply it by the given input and we end up with the desired E of S. But what is that transfer function? It can be easily calculated, just like calculating C of S over R of S. You just need to look at this E of S as the desired, the parameter of interest or the, the output. Temporarily, let's look at this E of S as the output of the system. So the transfer function will be the transfer functions or the blocks in the direct line between R and E which is none, so we put one in here, over one plus loop gain function. One plus the gain, the, the, uh, the product of the transfer functions around the loop. 
which is 1 over 1 plus k of s g of s so we have the transfer function of error over the reference So, using this va the final value theorem, let's denote the steady state error in Laplace domain. Let's denote it by E sub SS. So, the steady state error in the in the Laplace domain. Let's denote it by E sub SS. So, E sub SS equals limit of s going to 0 s multiplied by e of s which is equal to s going to 0 s multiplied by the transfer function of e of s over r of s multiplied by r of s this was E of S over R of S. That transfer function. We just derived it. So, this is the relation which we're going to be using quite frequently. Let's call it equation 1 for a steady state error in the Laplace domain. Let's look at different cases, the three different type of inputs. A step input R of S equals 1 over S. The steady state error from equation 1 equals limit S going to 0 of s multiplied by 1 over 1 plus L of s multiplied by the input which is 1 over s as you see this s is gonna cancel this s I'm sorry and we're gonna end up with the limit s going to 0 of 1 over 1 plus L of s and this is equal to 1 over 1 plus the limit s going to 0 of L of s. Okay, now looking at this relation, if we want the steady state error to be 0, we need the denominator, this part in the denominator, to be infinity in order to end up with this whole thing being equal to 0. So, a steady state error is zero if and only if limit of s going to zero of L of s equals infinity. But this means that if we write L of s in this form, L of s is a polynomial over another polynomial. So, let's say s plus z1, s plus z2, s to the power of some n, s plus p1, s plus p2. So, these minus z1 to till minus, as minus z1, minus z2, and uh, so on, they are the zeros of the loop gain function, and minus p1, minus p2, and so on are the poles, uh, non zero poles of the loop gain function, and the zero poles of the loop gain function are due to this term. If this n, so typically, generally, n is greater than or equal to 0. If n is 
greater than or equal to one, then we'll have at least one pole at the origin, at least one s in the denominator of l of s. Then when s goes to zero, that guy will result in this whole fraction to blow up, will result in this desired behavior. So, if n is equal to or greater than one, then we'll have such a thing as you see in here. If n is equal to zero, when s goes to zero, nothing happens in here. It does not blow up if n is equal to zero. It blows up only if n is greater than or equal to one. So, a definition first. The poles at the origin are called pure integrators of the transfer function. So, in here, if the system has at least one pure integrator, then this desired behavior will be observed. So, for unit a stop input, one has a steady state error equal to zero only if the loop gain function contains at least one pure integrator. i.e. if n is equal to or greater than 1 which this n is the order of the pole at the origin so let's go back to that example 2 this in here we realize that the steady state error was not 0 what is loop gain function? We have it in here. This is loop gain function. Does it go, does it blow up when s goes to zero? When s goes to zero, it does not blow up. So, limit of L of s, s going to zero was not infinity. Therefore, a steady state error was not zero. Note that these reasoning they are for the case of a, of a feedback unity feedback system. So, in example one, there was no feedback. So this whole discussion does not hold there. It holds only for the case of a unity feedback so we discussed the case of unit step input let's proceed to case 2 ramp input RFS equals 1 over S square From equation one, we have a steady state error equals limit of s going to zero, s multiplied by one over one plus L of s multiplied by the input. 
as you see this s is gonna cancel that too so we're gonna end up with limit of 1 over s plus s multiplies by L of s and this is equal to limit of 1 over s multiplied by L of s so if we want the steady stage error to be zero we need this thing to blow up this time s multiplied by L of s not just L of s s multiplied by L of s so we need to have in order to have a steady state error equals zero for ramp input the LFS has to have at least two pure integrators i.e. n greater than or equal to 2 what was that n? see that n was in here it was this guy this n so because S will be multiplied by L of S for the steady state error of the ramp input and we want that S multiplied by L of S S going to 0 be infinity we want this behavior so N has to be greater than or equal to 2 because one of one of one of those poles at the origin will be cancelled by this S in here so we need to have at least two poles at the origin in order to have this desired behavior for the case of ramp input which was this case see this red one if for the given ramp input the input linearly changing with time if we want to have this behavior like this red plot then we need to have two pure integrators at least in the loop gain function otherwise we'll either end up with this green plot with the constant steady state error or with that blue plot a steady state error of infinity now let's look at the third and final case three parabola input r of s equal 1 over s square from equation 1 we have steady state error equals limit of s going to 0 s multiplied by 1 over 1 plus l of s multiplied by the new input which is s 1 over s square As you see, this guy will cancel 
Oh, I'm sorry. The pure integrator, the parabola input will be 1 over s cube. So we'll end up with 1 over s cube in here. So that s will change this s cube to s square and we'll end up with the limit of s going to 0 1 over s square plus s square l of s which is equal to the limit of s going to 0 of 1 over s square l of s as you see in order to have the desired behavior of a steady state error equal to 0 we need to have s square multiplied by l of s blowing up as s goes to 0 so for a steady state error equal 0 one needs the l of s having at least three pure integrators i.e. n greater than or equal to three because two of those integrators will be cancelled when l of s is multiplied by s square so when we write l of s in this form two of these these n many poles at the origin will be cancelled when this guy is multiplied by s square if we have more than two poles at the origin then we'll end up with having at least one pole in the origin when L is multiplied by S square. Therefore, when limit S goes to zero, S square L of S will be infinity. And that leads to a steady state error equals zero. So, as a summary, we looked at this system, Unity Feedback, with some plant in here, and some controller in here, and for different type of inputs, we checked what's the necessary and sufficient condition for having a steady state error of going to zero. For the parabola input, ramp input, and unit input. And we realize that these uh, poles at the origin of the loop gain function, this n, plays an important role. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.